how you tackle the online trolls, basically. Um, if people online wish to say things, well, we live in a free country, you're entitled to do it. I just don't take it too seriously. I like to sort of have a positive attitude in life. And yes. if people want to be negative, well, I let them be negative. That's not going to stop me being positive. Um, probably about 30 years. 30 so. years in politics. We need more young people to be involved. I mm -hmm. think um, certainly improving civics education and understanding the role that people can play. Making sure that people understand that we live in the best country in the world. Mm -hmm. Pick your battles. Um, as a, an elected representative, you're not going to win every single battle or fight that you take on. Um, Australia and India are becoming closer. Yes. Uh, bilateral relationships are increasing. The bilateral relationship is getting stronger. Yes. I was privileged to lead one of the first delegations last year to India um, as speaker. Oh, okay. Um, I have seen some podcasts before and yes. I've been very impressed with the quality. Yes. So I thought, I wasn't quite sure yes. the setup, but okay. um, to have such a professional, um, organised yes. uh, studio here, yes. right in suburban Brisbane, yes. um, is very impressive. The biggest lesson I've learned is stop, take a breath, have a think about what the solution is you're trying to achieve and then work towards that. Welcome to Rover another episode, Beyond the Ballot. Today we welcome our Honourable Mr. Milton Dick. He's a Member of Parliament in Oxley. Welcome to our show, Mr. Milton. It's Thanks great for to your be time. here. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. And let's start with the tell us about yourself first, please. Well, currently, as you said, I am the federal member for Oxley, representing the people of the southwest suburbs of Brisbane and parts of Ipswich. Yes. And I'm also the 32nd Speaker of the House of Representatives Wonderful. for Australia, which is a huge honour and privilege. Uh, prior to that, I yes. served uh, as a Brisbane City Councillor yes. for eight years, so got to understand a lot of local issues, yes. very much from the grassroots level. Yes. And before that, I had worked in and around politics and government yes. for most of my life and yes. grown up in the south side of Brisbane yes. and now have the privilege of representing this part of uh, Australia in the National Parliament. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, can you share with us your childhood act? Please. Well, growing up in uh, suburban Brisbane in the 1970s and 80s uh, on the south side, as I said, okay. uh, was uh, terrific. Um, my parents, my late parents, uh, really believed in the ethic of hard work yes. uh, and putting back into community and society. So my father served in World War II oh, as okay. a signalman okay. Uh, okay. and in the Navy. Uh, and my when he left the um, uh, the, the war, he then trained as a butcher uh, and set up a business okay. with his younger brother, yes. uh, Milton Dick Senior, who I'm yes. named after. Yes. And they began a successful butcher's business in Brisbane. Okay. And then, um, uh, luckily, he married my mum mm -hmm. uh, in 1964. Uh, and then they raised their family uh, okay. on the south side of Brisbane. Wonderful, wonderful. What what exactly inspired you to come into the politics? I think probably th the values and efforts that our parents showed their three children of uh, service before mm -hmm. uh, self, mm -hmm. making sure that they were always giving back to the community. Um, my mother was heavily involved with the church and volunteer organisations, things like Meals on Wheels, sports. Um, Dad was very um, dedicated to running a business to be successful for his family. Mm -hmm. So I think probably those values that I got from my parents of from an early age, instilling the values of helping others probably led me towards this career. And I'm very blessed for their guidance and obviously those early uh, valued lessons. 
any memorable moments in while you were on the Brisbane City Council? Look, I loved my time on the Brisbane City Council. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a very steep learning curve for me entering um, public life. It mm-hmm. wasn't something necessarily mm-hmm. I was committed to probably as a child. It w- wouldn't have been something I often ask children now when I visit schools who could yes. see themselves being a Member of Parliament. And sometimes kids put up their hands. Um, but I always remind them that I didn't put up my hand when I was asked that question. It wasn't. <laughs> probably something I thought I would be doing, but yes. having the opportunities and support that I've been given yes. and understanding how community works from that grassroots level. They often say local government is the level closest to the people. So I loved every single minute of serving the people uh, that I represented um, and probably the sense of satisfaction of achieving things and helping things straight away. The Brisbane City Council is a very large organisation. Uh, it has a very large workforce. So yes. chances are if someone asked you a question, you could probably help them out. And I yes. really enjoyed that satisfaction of helping people. That's wonderful. Is there any bad experience while on the city as a councillor? Well, the Brisbane City Council is very political. Mm. Um, so even though I had been involved with party politics before, it was a very steep learning curve for me. Yep with um, entering the Brisbane City Council. Probably, to be fair, a little more combative than even the federal parliament. Yes. Um, so that probably put me in good stead uh, yes. to understand the art of effective debating. Yes. Starting your case, advocating. Um, I was an opposition councillor, so yes. you had to work doubly hard to get projects approved or yes. funding. Yes. So I think everything I've done has always been a good training ground through school and university, through yes. my working career, then yes. council, then now the federal parliament. Yes. I've always been lucky to, I guess, had a pretty good apprenticeship along the way. Wonderful, wonderful. So... You are a member of parliament and 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 what challenges you face in as a MP? Well, my role as a member of parliament means I've still got to effectively advocate and represent the people who have elected me to serve them uh, in addition to my responsibilities as speaker. So I need to make sure at all times I'm still working as hard as I can yes. as a member of parliament yes. um, to understand those complex needs of a growth corridor and a growth community where I represent particularly in the greater Springfield area Mm -hmm. which is a very fast growing area so making sure that I'm adequately and effectively Mm -hmm. representing those people and making sure their voices are heard probably is a challenge while balancing the responsibilities I have as the speaker of the parliament as well so no two days are the same but I won't be the speaker or I'm not lucky enough to be the speaker unless I'm the federal member for Oxley. So I've got to always remember that. Wonderful. Wonderful. How do you balance your political responsibilities with your personal life? Look, it's um, there isn't a lot of time for personal life when you enter public life. You need to find a balance and make sure family, friends um, aren't forgotten. Yes. Um, but I'm very, very lucky to have a family that is supportive. I've obviously have an older brother who's also a state member of parliament. So um, whilst it wasn't something I think our family planned, we've ended up into these very privileged positions. So it is about understanding that you won't be in these roles forever. Um, So to make every moment count, to make every day count. And that's what I hope to do as a federal member of parliament. And I certainly know that's what Cameron does in his role as a state representative as well. Once again, coming back from those strong values we learned from our parents of hard work and giving back. Okay. Um, uh, uh, You you are the elder one, right? Youngest. Youngest one? Yeah. Ah. So Cameron is... Cameron is the elder one. Yeah, he is. And we have an older sister who is... uh, She's, re- she's, re- brother and sister? she's really the boss of the family. Um, <laughs> she is a wonderful educator. She's been a teacher yes. for over 30 years. Yes. Uh, and I'm in awe of her uh, commitment to oh, okay. believing in education, the power of okay. education as well. She's okay. remarkable herself. Yeah. Elder sister is always a mother, you know. Always, always in charge. <laughs> always a mother, always in charge, for sure. Uh, um, uh, how you tackle, like, uh, now we are living in the online era, how you tackle the online trolls, basically? You know, the people, people, it's very easy to, uh, now these days, just to write, uh, like, 
you know abusive comments and how you deal with these kind of things um i don't really take things personally um i don't tend to read what people say i mean if they've got a view or a different point of yeah point of view to me um yeah. for something i'm doing i i always i always say welcome constructive feedback i yeah. mightn't like constructive feedback but i welcome it because yeah social media i think is can be a force for good yes. where people give you their views and they see what you do and they yes. give you feedback yeah occasionally people will say things disparagingly yeah um but if someone's not prepared to put their name to it and generally that's what the case is yeah. I, i tend to ignore it and realize that i've got a mandate and a mission to do from the people who have elected me they're the people i really um worry about and make sure that i'm honoring their support um if people online wish to say things well we live in a free country they're entitled to do it <laughs> i just don't take it too seriously if they're um okay and and, and i i I like to sort of have a positive attitude in life and yes. if people want to be negative well I let them be negative that's not going to stop me being positive that's great that's wonderful okay outside the politics what are your some of your hobbies and interests well spending time with family and friends um when I do have some spare time um I try and keep up a bit of long distance running i'm a very slow um runner okay. um but there's a group of friends who we sort of catch up and might go for some bush trails um some running through some of the beautiful picturesque mountains around brisbane uh and particularly around uh, red bank plains mm-hmm. and greater springfield where i represent yes um and you always see people out and about exercising um, yes. walking their dogs doing things so i i, I love getting out in yes. the nature uh, yes. in the natural environment True. um also just spending a bit of time uh with extended family as well um i'm very lucky to have quite a large extended family so we love getting together i wish it was more um but when we do we really try and make it quality time okay any sports uh i do i follow a lot of sports um but living the lifestyle that we live there's not a lot of time I'm, for a long time I used to play in yeah, you know hard. touch football or yes. um played mixed netball um for a, quite a while oh, okay. um but the schedule doesn't really allow a lot of time for um team sports um I always sort of was a ordinary player um at school <laughs> uh and at university middle ranking never yes. at top of the tree um but yeah if if I get the chance Um I've got a number of great local footy clubs in my area and I always try and support them. Um growing up in Brisbane, uh we've always sort of as a family supported the Broncos and the Brisbane Lions, so yes. It's a real treat if you get to go along I to know. to a game in person. I know. Um but they're probably few and far between at the moment. Bro- Broncos is a kind of another religion, you know. <laughs> well, you know, if you're from Brisbane, you're back yes. to Broncos. Yes, there are some true. exceptions. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's a team that I it think unites true. our city and certainly our family has always been a, a yes. proud Broncos that's supporters. True. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Can you share any funny experience in uh, during your m- member of parliament or in uh, as in politics doesn't matter in council or in <clears throat> um funny look yes. probably some of the funniest moments has been with kids um kids are have a when you're visiting schools or yes. fates or activities kids always keep you grounded yes um and <laughs> kids often like saying um uh my surname yes um they yes. <laughs> always have a bit of a a chuckle at that and yes. and sometimes i've been at assemblies or it's very serious um yes. giving out awards and yes. then you can hear the giggles um yes. throughout the, yes. the the in a nice way and then yes. i start laughing as yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. so i've got to be careful I, well, if someone starts <laughs> laughing around me i'm it's a bit contagious so yeah. probably yeah. the best moments i've had or funniest moments have always been okay. involving kids and visiting schools which probably is the best part of the job okay okay any heartwarming experience Um yeah there'd be there'd be a lot um having the privilege of being a member of parliament and taking on roles of such a speaker um you get to meet 
many, many people. Yes. Um, and probably hearing some of the heartache of um, people who have gone through trauma. Yeah. Reminding just how lucky you are for the life you have. Um, probably in 2011 and 2022 when um, part of my community in both those years were impacted by floods. Yes. Um, some in the same areas. True. Uh, probably the most heartwarming and difficult thing was watching people's families and households yeah. completely Oxley disappear. Oxley was hit very badly, isn't it? Yeah, and parts yeah, of Goodna and the yeah, centenary suburbs. So, uh, particularly in 2011 when... Um, yeah. I was a new, relatively new elected member of council, okay. um, pitching in and helping people out and put me in good stead for 2022. But sitting with people and hearing, you know, how they've lost everything, yeah. um, their possessions, yeah. that would be difficult. But also heartwarming when you see the community rally, yeah. uh, members of the Indian community across um, Brisbane and Queensland rallying and the multicultural yes. communities, dropping off food. Organising food relief, organising yep. hampers, yep. all of those things um, at their emergency recovery centres made a huge difference, made a huge difference to those people. But I got to witness the kindness of That's true. so That's many true. people. Which and and, and it, it's no doubt about that. It's a true Aussies comes up uh, and helping each other. That's Always. commendable. commendable. But the multicultural communities rallying yes. in Brisbane as well is, yes. is – something that really has warmed my heart over the years when yes. people are in need yes. and normally people have come with nothing and have built successful True. businesses True. or come as yes. refugees or migrants yes. and then they're the first ones there to help. Yes. And that, that really yes. probably is one of the most heartwarming things That's I've seen. True. That's true. That's true. And I think uh, the the true colour uh, comes up when when is anything happened like you know or especially in the act of code like you know corona or uh, or the flood and then is the real uh, true um, uh, country people comes up on the front and helping each others and bringing each others uh, you know together Absolutely. so you are not you alone you know this and that's no doubt that's the 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 the, the Images we saw uh, on online during uh, flood, that's scary. That's so scary. Yeah, it was uh, terrifying when those natural disasters happen. Yeah. No one really is prepared for them. No one. No one expects them to happen. Um, they yep. can happen like that. Yes. Whether that be floods or yes. bushfires or, yes. or whatnot. Uh, that is the remarkable story of not just this part of yes. um, Queensland, but right across the country where people rally in and help each other. Yes. That's that true Aussie spirit. Yes. So, yeah, it's um, it, it's challenging as a representative, but yes, because uh, you want to do true. everything you can to help your constituents. True. true. Um, but when you see others come in and help, it's, it's amazing. Yes. And probably of all the things I've done as a member of parliament, and elected office now of nearly 17 years, uh, seeing the community come together and look after each other yes. is probably the, the, the best thing. That's the true Aussie spirit, man. That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure. Okay, so what advice would you like to give to young people who are interested in politics today? I uh, Look, I think we need more young people to be involved. I mm -hmm. think um, certainly improving civics education and understanding the role that people can play. I always say to school students as I travel the country in my role as speaker and lifting what I call uh, democracy or literacy democracy, um, making sure that people understand that we live in the best country in the world, mm -hmm. that with citizenship comes responsibilities and True. rights. Yes. So I always say to people, I don't care what your view is, it may not be my own view or yes. you may not agree with me. Yes. Just have a view. Yes. Take an interest in True. what happens in our country. True. Um, you know, you may not like the politicians or you may not like the governments or whoever's in charge. Yes. But you've got a stake in that and you've got a say in that. So yes. make sure if you've got citizenship, this precious gift that we yes. all have living in this wonderful country. Yes. Um, that you exercise it and you be proud of, of your role in democracy. That's wonderful. That's great. That's great. And as you are a speaker, and most of the time you are uh, uh, in, in, you have to be in Canberra, right? 
And how do you connect with your uh, Oxley people? Well, I don't live in Canberra. I've chosen to obviously still remain okay. um, in my constituency. I live in uh, uh, the the electorate of Oxley because I think it's really important to stay connected. Yeah. So I try and spend as much time as possible in Brisbane. Okay. Um, when the parliament isn't sitting, I always yes. return home. Okay. There are occasions when I'll have to do some travel, okay. uh, either around the country or on occasion internationally. But I try and work as hard as I can when I'm in the community. We've got a parliamentary uh, break this week, so okay. there'll be no travelling for me. I'll okay. be visiting schools, visiting seniors, supporting small businesses, understanding and listening to as many constituents as I can this week so that if they need help or assistance, um, I conduct mobile offices, street yes. corner meetings, right down to the grassroots. So office is always operational and during yeah. all business hours. And I try and get out in the community as much as possible. There's no point sitting behind my desk yep. at yep. Forest Lake. I need That's to right. be out listening yes. to people yes. and helping them. Um, yes. So I try and make that balance. As I said, my number one priority is the member for Oxley. I have an additional responsibility, but I can't be the speaker unless I'm the member for Oxley. Okay, okay. So what do you hope to achieve during the time as a Speaker of the Australian House of Representatives? Well, a couple of things. Our Parliament in Canberra is the most visited building in Australia. Okay. Uh, uh, it's probably the place where most people visit over a year. And okay. we have over one million visitors to Parliament oh, really? each year there and, of course, the War Memorial. So as the presiding officer, it's my job to hopefully make our seat of government and home of government as welcoming as possible um, to ensure that every Australian knows that their democracy is working for them. Yes. Uh, running a new civics program for the last couple of years as Speaker has been a real um, mission for myself as Speaker to ensure that we are empowering the next generation so they understand our system of government. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, I will be visiting my 100th school as speaker across Australia. So I've visited regional and remote schools. I'll be visiting okay. um, parts of central Western Australia, yes. very remote communities, and then travelling hopefully to the Tiwi Islands in central Australia to take the parliament yes. to those schools. And some schools I've visited have only had two students in them. So wow. one teacher schools on border communities wow. so that those kids understand that no matter where you live in this country, mm -hmm. there might be a prime minister sitting in the classroom or that they can make a real difference participating in our democracy as well. Okay. So how, uh, how long now, in, we are in 2024, how long you've been as an active um, uh, in politics? How many years? No. Oh, I'll probably give away my age now. Um, probably about 30 years. 30 so years in politics. Just when I first um, became active through yes. my involvement with the University of Queensland. Yes. And then was fortunate enough to be elected as the national president for the youth movement for mm -hmm. the Australian Labor Party. Yes. Um, and never really thought I'd be... Um, really in that involved and have just continued my involvement over the years. So it's been um, a massive part of my life uh, okay. and I wouldn't have changed anything because it's enabled me to meet some amazing people, to connect with so many different Australians and probably the best thing I can do is to honour that um, uh, support I've been given by working as hard as I can to repay that support. Okay. So now looking back, what do you consider your proudest achievement in your political career so far? Look, I don't think there'd be one single thing. Um, and I don't look as achievements that I've done. It's achievements that hopefully the community has benefited from. Probably it's as simple as helping as many people as possible. Um, dealing with government and navigating government uh, it may be a simple thing of organising a payment that people couldn't process properly or bringing a loved one or a family member, family reunion. Um, I love seeing families united 
Um, yes. We, in the community I represent, probably almost 50% have a parent or were born overseas. Yes. So it's a very, very multicultural yes. electorate that I represent. Um, working with those different multicultural communities yes. um, and supporting the diaspora from right across the world probably would go close to um, some of the best things I've ever done. Uh, as I said, having a very safe and stable childhood myself here in Brisbane, um, fourth or fifth generation, to see the look in the eyes of kids whose parents perhaps have fled their country yes. to call Australia home now, and then to see those kids go on to become ducks of their primary school, ducks of their high school, or yep. win awards, yes. go to, to university, and to then catch up with parents after, and to see the pride with a lot of families who've come with nothing to this country. That's true. And have worked so hard That's and true. believed in the power and the transformation of education for their kids. That's true. Um, probably gives me enormous joy to see those kids then. Uh, if I'm out and about, um, uh, a, a story a couple of weeks ago, um, I was just getting a script filled and um, it was a local um pharmacy mm -hmm. after I've been to the GP and the pharmacist came out and shook my hand and you know said hello yes. uh, and I, I said you know hi and he was telling me about his business and he owned the business um, he's a young young fellow um, and he remembered me giving him an award when he was at high school yes. and his parents were so proud that um, their son had achieved that but their member of parliament I had nothing to do with the award. He had earned that fair and square. Yes. Um, but that struck me as just what, and I was so proud of him that he obviously worked hard, studied, and now he was owning that business. Uh, That's and I great. thought, wow. Um, and it was still locally in the area. He hadn't moved away. That's um, great. Because he wanted to keep giving back to the community. I thought that was remarkable. That's true. That's true. That's wonderful. How do you unwind and relax after a busy political day? Well, the mind always keeps ticking over when Parliament's sitting in particular. Mm -hmm. um, if there's not time, nighttime meetings or um, events, uh, and I try and go to as many events as possible locally here when I'm home, um, I might go for a run um, and probably get stuck into some good Netflix um, or Stan, depending on what. I like a good um, uh, murder mystery uh, kind of kind of sci-fi as well yeah, so yeah. i like a, i like a bit of everything yes um but yeah it's good it's good to relax or i'll just go out to dinner with friends and always catch up particularly um friends that i grew up with or family and and friends because they're the ones that really keep you grounded and <laughs> making sure as a politician they really keep yeah, it, yeah, yeah. they yeah. tell you what's going really going on yes we need a people like uh, who tell us and keep always us on the ground for sure always <laughs> Can you share a lesson you have learned in the public service? Uh, I probably think pick your battles. Um, as a, an elected representative, so you're not going to win every single battle or fight that you That's take true. on. Um, I think when I was first elected, I wanted to solve the world's problems, take all the, 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 the battles on that I could. Yep. And then all you're doing is just running around yeah fighting these battles when um i probably now look at situations and think okay well i can have a practical role in fixing that and i know the pathways now to fixing things so probably the biggest lesson i've learned is stop take a breath have a think about what the solution is you're trying to achieve and then work towards that and understanding that it might take a bit longer than you thought and when someone comes to you for help explaining to them the process, as politicians, sometimes we just like to say, yep, we'll fix fix it all for you because, you know, you want to please the constituent or you want to um, fix it. But sometimes the harder part is explaining that it will take a bit longer, the steps involved. You still get the outcome, but taking them with you on that journey. What are your personal and professional aspirations for future? Well, um, I think at the, the, the short term is making sure that I continually effectively represent the people of Oxley to the best of my ability, um, making sure that I'm an accessible and hopefully approachable Member of Parliament. I love 
when I'm out and about getting a coffee or just getting groceries, people come up to me and they sort of feel that they're intruding. I love it. I like the fact that people feel comfortable. I would hate to think that they'd walk by me and think, oh, I don't want to talk to that guy or yeah, yeah, yeah. he doesn't want to be bothered. So I always encourage that. Um, and as Speaker, making sure that the Parliament probably remains a respectful place. I was raised in a family of how you treat people is how you expect to be treated. So that would probably be my two goals, to make sure that I'm an accessible and approachable MP. That would be my number one goal, to help as many people as I can and as Speaker to make sure that we're respecting and dignifying the Parliament as much as possible. That's wonderful. Any memories you would like to share with us today, especially with your brother Cameron? Um, well, Cameron and I have been very competitive over the years. Okay. Um, we've always had fierce, particularly as kids. Yes. Not so much now. Yes. Um, but, yeah, we, we – I'm very proud of, of his achievements, being Treasurer and Deputy Premier of Queensland. And I know our late parents would be enormously proud. I – Uh, visited state parliament a couple of weeks ago um, and I don't spend a lot of time uh, at state parliament, I think, um, attending the chamber. It's probably been years and years since I've ever seen the parliament, yes. just just being busy and sometimes parliament sits on the same day and, yes. you know, everyone's busy. But I went there and I hadn't seen him probably sit in parliament there for a very, very long time and I'd forgotten when I was sitting in the gallery and was recognised and then saw him there working and uh, it, it reminded me just of how much privilege that we have and how proud I am for his achievements as, as well. And sometimes um, you're busy in life and, yes. you know, you're busy doing your job and living yes. your life with friends and family and all those things. But yes. that moment um, was very special for me and I was so pleased that, you know, I got to share him uh, with everyone, but also to see him working hard. Uh, that's true. Is there any childhood memory with Cameron? Childhood? Well, he, w he was always a Did lot of... Did he beat you? Beat me? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was too quick. This is brothers do. I was too quick. Um, <laughs> well, I was a bit taller than him as well, so, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. he, couldn't, he couldn't really <laughs> catch me as well. No, we... Um, uh, Uh, probably the best times were always when our family was together and with our grandparents as well. So we were we treasure those moments. And there wasn't as many um, photographs or videos as we obviously have now. Yes. So from time to time we love getting together and looking at those shots because there's not that many of them. Yeah. We yeah. take for granted now. Yes, um, true. Maybe true. we take 50 photos a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but back then uh, when we were growing up, Yeah, it wasn't that, that many memories. You, so. you need a special camera, then a special like uh, envelope to, you know, and then you go to the special shop to get the photocopy. You've got to wait for the film to be developed yeah, yeah. and then they might turn out. Yeah. You can't yeah, edit yeah, it. Exactly. You don't, you, you don't even know until it uh, comes up on the result. Yeah. No face tune yeah. or edit no, e editing no, back then. No, back then. No. So, yeah, probably the best um, memories for all of us, uh, either family holidays or getting together. Um, we're always a competitive family. We're always playing board games and, or cards. Okay. So we've always had that bit of, bit of competitive streak amongst okay. us. And occasionally now we'll all get together with our families and um, it doesn't get – it gets very competitive but friendly. That's wonderful. Not too competitive. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, as, as we are seeing, India and Australia are – like on the best time um, of the, um, I'm in, the, in Australia for nearly 20 years and, and I, I can see that this is the best uh, uh, like a kind of uh, relationship between mm. India and Australia. Um, how this affect Indian Australian community and how we can influence Australian society? Well, I think that's right. Um, Australia and India are becoming closer. Yes. Our bilateral relationships are increasing the bilateral relationship is getting stronger yes i was privileged to lead one of the first delegations last year to india um, as speaker oh, okay um, so i had the opportunities in my first term mm -hmm. to visit india and i was told you either love india or you love india 
and <laughs> there's no choice. That's great. So That's great. I chose India as a country to visit as speaker and to take a bipartisan delegation um, because I wanted to improve on our parliamentary relations um, and had the opportunities of meeting with high level um, members of parliament and then uh, some trade discussions um, and went to the south of India, uh, saw a wonderful cricket game. Yes. The result wasn't as good when <laughs> India beat Australia, but oh, it was okay. a terrific cricket game in Chennai um, oh, okay. and okay. then Bangalore and then finished at the... In the World Cup? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I know. But end of the day, the uh, Australia beat India on the World Cup final. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's cricket cricket oh. in India is next oh, level and it was it was British. remarkable to see People cry yeah it is the emotion <laughs> cry, yes um, and then finishing uh, with meetings for the P20 or the G20 for the presiding yes. officers and having a, a moment to meet with Prime Minister Modi yes. um, was was an opportunity of a lifetime yes but to deepen that relationship between our parliaments yes. to have a better understanding of what what the opportunities lie between the two countries, particularly with trade, students, um, making sure that we've got our people-to-people -people relationships continue yes. to grow. Yes. We've seen our Prime Minister and Prime Minister Modi have unprecedented um, dialogue and meetings in our two countries for the last couple of years, which I think is a good thing. And I wanted to improve that relationship from a parliamentary um, level. So I was able to meet with the uh, Speaker of the Lok Sabha, on Birla, who's a, a, a terrific um, leader of the parliament, mm -hmm. and to begin and continue that um, important relationship between our parliaments. Which part India you go? I'm sorry? Which part of India you go? So you the yeah. south to um, Tamil Nadu, Chennai, yes, yes. Bangalore, and then New Delhi. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I've, in my previous mission, um, a delegation uh, also visited Hyderabad. So seen a little bit haven't been to the northwest yet of oh, india okay. um okay. india Mumbai, is uh, uh, you you did you visit any any local place in uh, new delhi uh mostly like they have a red fort and yeah yeah did you visit Taj i have Mahal? been there before and i've been to the taj mahal back did in you been there? Okay. 2017 um, 18 yeah it was okay. remarkable work okay. to to have those experiences um and as a member of parliament yes and to represent such a, a large and growing indian diaspora um, particularly in the Greater Springfield area, um, is really important for me. Yes. Um, understanding where my constituents have come from. Yes, true. I true. India is made up of many, many cultures oh, and many countries within yes. one. Yes, um, yes. But the subcontinent is is such an important region yes. um, for our country. Yes. And I see enormous opportunity, yep. huge growth. Yes, yes, for sure. I travel, uh, before I came in uh, Australia, I traveled more than... Uh, 22, 23 states in, in, in India. Yeah. And I always say in India, when you travel 23 states, it's not a you travel 23 states, it's a you are travel 23 countries basically. That's right. Every states have own uh, food, own culture, own complexion. Different religions. Different, yeah, way, even the same religion, but in a different way of yeah. uh, uh, practicing. And the water taste is different. The recipes change. Yep. Uh, even sometimes the same food, but the recipes change. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a, every part have a own speciality. And the, uh, yeah, it's individual country, I can say that. Every states have a yeah. kind um, of... A, they have their own unique yeah. um, uh, way of being, yeah. and I think it's something to celebrate yes. that diversity yes. within a country. Yes, um, and I see that when I see the different events. I was at a, a major event on the weekend, um, the Brisbane Carolee yeah. Society. Um, yeah. The the different um, uni unified um, approach to to yeah. world affairs, but yes. individual and different kind of attitudes and amazing food amazing food so when you go in india did you try uh, uh, like a, a mild or medium or is it try different dishes when, when i'm <laughs> when i'm traveling um i think you need to be expanding your horizons and yeah. everything yeah about knowledge about history yes and taste yes so i always try and 
push the limit. Oh, take care. Yeah, I push oh, okay. the limit where I can <laughs> and ask for a little warmer than normal. Not too hot, but just training my palate. Yes. A lot of my Indian friends think I have a very, very um, weak and soft palate because I don't like it spice bit. I've said, all right, I'm training. I'm yes. in training Yes. to improve the heat. Did you try it like, like their um, kind of uh, – when, when you were in India, did you wear – Indian clothes or you are in suit? Um, well, for meeting as I was in suit, but I have brought back some amazing <laughs> tailored outfits. Because I saw you the, like you other day, you wear a very nice kurta uh, yeah. pajama, I think is the one of the Indian events you, you Yeah, I try, I try and um, they've got to use a lot of material um, to oh, make, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. to make my size. But um, yeah, I try and for official events or um, activities, I always try and um, blend in, but being very tall at Sometimes it's hard, but yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, the thing is, uh, uh, we have a affordable tailor there and they can give you within 24 hours. Uh, it's, the, that's the, the beauty. The in tailor <laughs> in, in Delhi was, was amazing yeah. um, and, and fitted me perfectly yeah. and really didn't do any measurements, just yeah. did a few, yeah, 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 yeah. a few drawings and a yes. few sketches. And yeah. uh, it arrived in Australia, this beautiful... Um, traditional outfit and okay. fit like a glove. It's amazing. Okay, any message to especially, um, okay, I tell you a little bit more about our audience. Our audience is a uh, um yes it's a uh, indo oz tv indo represent india and oz represent australia uh and uh we're sharing a, a not audience not only uh, india or australia we're sharing a, uh, the people are in pakistan people are from bangladesh people are from nepal um this whole uh, four or five countries they are watching over um uh, podcasts and uh, commenting as well and then we have a facebook group community as well indians in brisbane punjabi in brisbane gujarati in brisbane uh, malayali in brisbane and fiji in brisbane mm -hmm. all uh, and the the biggest one is the indians in brisbane it's we started in 2014 and we already crossed 95000 on there yeah. and uh, we are celebrating uh, this in this January 10th uh, year anniversary in um, you know, for all our groups. Very active audience. Um, and in, in that audience is not limited to only Indians. We have uh, these all four countries people in, in our groups as well, helping each other, um, especially the people who are nearly migrant in here. Um, the the people who are already have experience on some kind of same event happening, he ask a newbie ask us some kind of question, and the people helping and yeah. give them a guidance. You go there and um, go there. So, any message to our um, this community? Uh, feel free to ask. This this is your camera. Well, I guess my message would be: as a representative, we are here to serve um, all all of our constituents but there is something special about the um, increasing and importance role that members of the subcontinent is playing in yes. society mm -hmm. whether that through be through our government through business relations students um, calling Brisbane home yes um, I would hope that as a representative we demonstrate across all levels of government just how yes. important the community is to ensuring uh, economic prosperity, um, but also building the people-to-people -people relations between these countries. We live in some pretty unusual times and some difficult times, but I think the best way forward for our, all of our collective countries is for us to engage, listen, and respect to one another. Uh, and I'm hopeful that today's interview uh, with such a respected uh, journalist and also such wide coverage um, will also enable me to better connect with constituents as well um, so that they feel they can approach me whether I be getting a cup of coffee or at a community event that people can come up to me and let me know how I can help them or more importantly give me their ideas about yes. their experiences yes. so that we can hopefully learn from each other 
That's wonderful. Okay. After you came to our studio, um, and first of all, thanks for agreeing to do this uh, uh, podcast with us. And because it's, uh, we really know that you you are too busy to to covering the whole Australia as a speaker and then as a member of parliament as well. And and uh, giving us a time that's not easy for sure. And and thanks, we really appreciate that as well. And and, and when I. Well, it's just a feedback for for us basically. When when I invite uh, and when you uh, decided to come here, what was your expectations about our studio or or our setup? And when in, when we are in here, we are on wrap up stage now. So, what are you uh, gonna tell about us? Because we we believe we always have a room for improvement. Anyway. Of course, um, I have seen some podcasts before, and yes. I've been very impressed with the quality. Yes. So I thought I wasn't quite sure to yes. set up, but okay. um, to have such a professional, um, organised yes. uh, studio here, yes. right in suburban Brisbane, um, yes. is very impressive, and it's a real yeah. credit to in your team that. You are focusing on the current issues and you yes. are focusing on leaders um, across a range of political um, yes. parties, which is yes. um, really important, I think, for the constituents to understand as yes. we head towards elections in India, elections yes. later this True. year in Queensland yes. and yes. probably another year's time nationally. Yes. True. Um, I go back to my original remarks that I want people to be informed. Yes. I want them to have the information yes. and for them to be better engaged. Exactly. So that they understand exactly. Exactly. because your listeners and your yes. viewers yes. Um, all have a stake in this country uh, and are all equal stakeholders. Mm-hmm. And it's really important for me as a political leader yes. to make sure that they know yes. that they have that power as well. Yes. The whole idea to start this uh, uh, segment of uh, Beyond the Ballot is to, uh, you know, the people only... Uh, watch you guys on the TV and they always have a kind of uh, uh, political questions and political kind of uh, uh, way to answer as well because of course you you can't just throw the uh, answers on straight away because there's so many things involved on the each and every you know facts and everything but in this segment we we wanted to keep the the the, the we keep this segment more natural as possible and yep. more uh, we're gonna show the people to uh, our representative is approachable they are uh, not only you guys only can see on the uh, like a big tv channels or only on the big news um, uh, coverage tvs only we um, they are with us and we're gonna bring your what is your as a as as, as a human or as a, as a normal person uh, is you know that's i mean whole idea to well to i telling think, the people i think that's really important and um india is the home to the world's largest democracy that's true um and but there are differences yes um, some of my colleagues that i've met uh, yes. who are members of parliament yes um don't really understand when i explain to them that i drive myself around yes um I'll go and do True. my shopping or True. I'll do a pop-up exactly. office at the, the exactly. outside Woolworths yes. and they go, what do you mean? I'll say, yes. well, I set up a table, yes. I have a notebook, yes. um, people will come and exactly. have a chat to me and they go like, exactly. do they have to make an appointment? What about all exactly. your bodyguards? And I exactly. go, well, yes. it's just me. I, yeah, yeah. They don't, That's they true. don't, I mean, they're That's just true. a different, obviously That's constituencies true. are larger and those things. But I really am happy in Australia that our political system may not be perfect yes but it is perfect in the fact that people can come up to their representatives have a you know give me positive feedback negative feedback yes Yes. um and that's a good system of government bringing at least to to your representative your area representative uh go there tell them um, uh, and 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 it's approachable. That's that's another reason. Is uh, uh, I'm I'm saying that because uh, when we came from India, we have a totally different uh, yeah. mindset on, especially on the political representative. Uh, they are not much approachable, and they are very hard to get it. Um, and and that's what I always try to my uh, viewers as well uh, to go. They're going to listen to you. They're representing you, your, mm. your area. 
and talk to them and that's that definitely uh, you go and ask go and tell it's nothing harm nothing harm so well and i think that's that the beauty of these Australia. interviews are really important to that's true. bridging that gap as well that's true um, and that's i would true. hope if there's one thing that comes out of today's yes. Yes. brilliant discussion is that if people see me about yeah they are more than welcome to come up to me and have a chat definitely definitely okay lastly uh how our community engage and contribute to queensland economic growth and overall development any message to our viewers well i think your viewers um already know that they are welcome here in queensland they already know the importance that they play in our social fabric um of our society and our community but i always think there's more that can be done uh, my father who was in business always said business is evolving it always keeps changing and you've yes. got to keep adapting to the environment so as in some ways the world gets smaller we've got to make sure that we are more open to business our people to people links back home um in the subcontinent are are really strong but i think there is still further move to roof with a comprehensive strategic partnership that is underway at the moment where we can look at trade opportunities through critical minerals through manufacturing through um agriculture and tourism as well so we've got a wonderful opportunity for the people who from india call um brisbane and queensland home yes. so th- to spread the word that we are looking forward to further engagement and deeper respectful engagement as well and certainly i know whether across all political parties that's what people are committed to and i think that's a unifying thing that probably brings us all together a lot stronger um in some untroubling times india and australia continue to go from strength to strength and we're all committed to that that's wonderful thanks for sharing uh these insights and valuable uh like lessons for us for today and i think we have a go we are end of our podcast and first of all thank you very much really appreciate from bottom of my heart cuz um uh, this that's the whole idea to we wanna really wanna bring to to uh, all our viewers to to go and involve yourself uh, and yeah. and and g- if you have anything to say go to your local member exactly and, and i want and i want congr- i want to congratulate you and thank you for indos tv and making sure that our stories and your stories are yes. being told at the same time yes. uh, and it's an incredible powerful thing for our community to have the work that you do so thank it's an honor to be here today and look forward to coming back for another chat down the line definitely definitely to our viewers so in case you any have a question or queries uh, you can comment below and you can also if you are watching this in your oxley area you can visit um mr milton dick's office as well he's available he's a very down to earth guy you can uh, if you till watching till now you gonna have this impression for sure and yes the our representative are approachable go and uh, definitely involve in the politics and have your say thank you very much and see you with the next episode bye bye for now